Welcome to Let's Talk Geek episode 56, Sexy Chewbacca. Should your next computer monitor be a TV? Thanks for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 56. Uh, with us today, we have uh, more or less usual crowd. We were going to have, unfortunately, have Barry, but unfortunately, we think he's sleeping. But we have good old Quinton with us. Haven't had you with us for a tiny while. Mm. Um, Twitter handle? Quinton Z. Day. I forgot cool. for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jan Vermeulen. Uh, uh, Jan Z. Day. Jan V. Z. Day. Because Jan Z. Day was taken. Damn it. It's just Twitter squatter. Yeah. Stu it? Stu uh, underscore Z A. Z A. Gee, that's cheesy. I'm gonna have to change one now. Everyone's got Z A. I thought it was um, being unique. And myself, Tim Hawk, or Tim underscore uh Hawk. Z A. Fortunately no Z A. <laughs> and uh, mixing today by uh he's lonesome tonight for the first time is Me Gerard Vermeulen. Th- is this your first show doing live? I thought you did some of the LT Afrikaans and He's with, d- with some extra help. Oh, okay. There's always was there, somebody was young yeah. here and stuff. Okay, cool. So it's that stress of what, what have you forgotten or not forgotten. <laughs> In this you, case, you, quite you a ha- lot. You haven't made this mistake. I'm making it out again. You haven't hit record. We are recording, eh? As far as I can see, yes. Cool. Okay, cool. Right. <laughs> okay. We'll uh, find that, you, but we did not we'll, record We'll get into our show. Um, events happening up. It's Icon this weekend. Um, starts Friday, goes through Sunday uh, in Johannesburg. If you just Google it, you'll, you'll find all the links, and it'll off, obviously be in our show notes. Uh, we're going to be there on the Saturday, but yeah, come, come join us and come check it out. It's lots of fun. It's very cool. Get into the topics. Oh, but also, if you want more geek ho- dates, check oh, out stardates.ca.za. Cool. Uh, I think you need the www part in the front. Not anymore. Oh, has that been fixed? Has it been fixed? Okay, cool. Yeah. It's been fixed. All right. All right, going into the topics. Um, Google's made the maps downloadable, apparently. Um, well, small segments of it at a time. To yeah. be exact. Yeah. But that's quite mm. nice. It's been something that uh, I know I've been wanting for a while. Mm. Um, I have, must be honest and say I haven't had time to check it out this week. Yeah. It's been one of those stupidly busy weeks again. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if it's actually been deployed to our devices yet. Um, mm. I don't know if, uh, if you've checked it. <clears throat> Uh, Google Maps. No, not at all. All right. So it, this is not just straight caching. This is you can actually save the image or you, you select, is there an API or that you, you, you select your destination. Okay. So you're like, I'm going to be in this area. Oh, cool. And, and then, then it'll it save it. So if you don't have internet access but at that. It saves the whole vector layer. So very you can cool. zoom in, zoom out on that section. No, that's pretty awesome. That's very cool. Well, we Vector layers. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. So cute. Google also, um, I don't know if it's in the show notes, but Google also launched yesterday, I think, um, uh, new things it's in their market. Street View. Um, oh, market. Yeah, yeah. Street View yes, was also happening this week. Uh, Street View got updated no, in South Africa. We're going to speak about that now. Okay, cool. so, yeah. yeah, but uh, Google's um, updated Android market. You, um, the guys in the US can now download movies and books. And they say it's coming to select markets. Are we one of those? Exactly. I'm exactly. assuming no comment. No. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Look, like, we, we don't do not talk about things that are not launched. We don't even have Google Books yet. Sure. Or just a resounding what? Really? We tried to download Google Books. Like even free books. You can't get the, the You can't app. get the app. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I'm wondering. Surely this Google Books thing runs through uh, Google Books. The, the thing in the market runs but through Google Books. Uh, uh, the they go- showed you could download Game of Thrones. I know Google Books, you've been able to buy books already in America. Okay. So I don't know what's... So I wonder if that's all market is. It's just a uh, market just shows whatever's in Google Books already. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be possibly market allows you see. other people to. So you don't have to go through Google Books to buy it. So you don't have to have a agreement with Google Books, and you can just put your book up on the app, on the App Store. We'll have to that, wait and see. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be very cool. Yeah. And we yeah. totally speculate right now. So yeah, yeah. So we'll just believe everything we said. <laughs> Ignore the guy behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you shouldn't. <laughs> Except when you shouldn't. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Thing we did jump ahead. What a, yeah, Google. It's, it's been a rough week. It eh? has been a rough week. <laughs> um, all right, well, talking to some of the things we've done this week, uh, we've upgraded our server or moved our server into MWeb's hosting. Yeah. Uh, I must say it was very cool. Um, very painful. The guys that they were. Very painful. Poor, 
very not painful. Painless. 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 That's the word. <laughs> That's the word you're looking <laughs> for. They're right there. <laughs> no, I must say it was very cool. Um, the guys who helped us there, we, we had a struggle when because we did our own install because we wanted Ubuntu. It's not one of the – they do CentOS and Red Hat. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, Windows Server. Yeah. Um, but they were very helpful, and we were there for quite a while. Okay, them. cool. Um, so you're cool. No, it's definitely worthwhile. So th- this is managed uh, managed hosting or actually a dedicated server? Dedicated server. Cool. Um, I think it was mm. for the low end, 639 rand a month. Mm. Uncapped bandwidth. Nice. It's so very cool. Um, we checked with them. It's 10 megs in, 100 megs up. Yeah. Um, we're running an audio through it right now. We've been playing with it since last week, Friday. Looks very, very good. Works very nicely. Cool. Yeah, so um, feedback in the IRC or wherever else, like at any email address <laughs> at yeah. LT. Alti Network. Net- Let's talk network. Let's TV talk network or Alti Net TV. TV for cool. So to let us know what the audio quality is like while streaming. Yeah, and if things break badly, should I'm still wanting to see if we can now find a way of getting video streaming directly from our server. Now we'll have to play with what's it? Red Red, red Star, Five. Red Five. Yeah. Red Five. Red five. Um, but that's more of a long term uh, project. Plan. Yeah. All right. Um, I see this IC body is busy trying to seek a definition for broad- broadband in this country. ISPA, yes. Um, they, they've actually tabled a, a couple of proposals. It's mm. sort of in line with what the government has already said, mm. but it's more than just broadband. It's uncapped as well, which is quite a contentious mm. yes, issue. Especially with the so, 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 it's, uh, MTN. MTN's uncapped one. And MTN's uncapped thing will fall in that, perhaps, will fall in that definition because they might actually not fall afoul or run afoul of the uncapped part, but maybe the broadband part. Because <clears throat> uh, for those that don't know, MTN has uncapped 3G. Uh, you might not know it, but it's been around for a while. They've just recently dropped the prices on it. What, but they've got a very strict acceptable use policy. And they cut you off after a certain amount of data usage. Or not cut you off. They throttle you. Yeah, down, down to 128, 128 kbps. Yeah. Now, what ISPA is proposing and what government has already said is that the definition of broadband, the minimum speed something has to go at for it to be classified as broadband is 256 kbps anything slower than 256 is not broadband yeah, but i still think Africa it should be terms. more than that yes this is a co- this is actually taken from the itu mm-hmm. and the itu have two different standards one for developing nations and one for developed nations we took the one for developing nations Oh, yeah, Being I'm two, not going to say anything. Yeah. Two five six kbps, and oh, I and um, uh, I think the the DOC, um, you know, used that also as sort of a benchmark to go. We need to be. We need to give the population of South Africa broadband yeah. by 2020 or something to that effect. It was 2020, yeah, yeah. and it was and, and the two fifty six. And the definition of broadband is two five six, which so makes no sense because I mean, come on, that's in nine years' time. Yes, sure. I'm, gonna be I mean, I'm yeah. just saying, two, <laughs> the 384 to me at the moment now, if you want to do anything decent and keep up with modern, uh, you know, international trends, you can't run it on 384. Yeah, yeah. it's too late. Um, so I think aiming for 256 kbps, Look, it's, um, you know, by 2020, it's gonna, it's the, those people, it's going to be like being stuck on dial-up in today's day. Yeah. Yeah. I must be honest, look, if the entire country can get 256k, it, oh, fine, yeah, no, then, I mean, then I'm happy with that. But if it's sort of like the majority, you know... It comes it, down to this thing as accessing services. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you don't need more than 256 to access SARS's website to get maybe manage your government grant or whatever else like that that you need to do. Yeah. Pay your electricity bill. And yeah. Also, that I kind of stuff. Once the entire like populace is on broadband, the amount of services and things yeah. you can then run uh, multiply and stuff of course, like that. Yeah. 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 So that would be cool. But yeah, indeed. So and and, um, and I think it's 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 a good idea to get some uh, you know s- some basic definitions going because uh, you know folks are feeling um, you know hard done by even by Mweb. I mean Mweb who pretty much threw open broadband in yeah. South Africa. People are like, no, <laughs> one megasecond is too little. You know, even though I'm paying mm-hmm. less for it than I did <coughs> six months ago. Yeah. You know, I'm paying less for the amount of data that I'm using. Uh, you know, never mind less. I'm paying less than half, <laughs> a third. I mean, you're, you're cruising through 400 gigs a month. That would have cost you, multiply that by 60, yeah. it would have cost you that much. Yeah. So people are still complaining. And, uh, and to a degree, I understand why. You know, they've got a four meg line, they're only getting one meg through. But, I mean, that's uncapped. And th- that's the trade off. You get lots of data, but. But you I have must to say, I've got the four meg uncapped. And I, uh, look, during the day, during business hours, you don't always, but if you're pulling, depending on what you're pulling. Uh, if you're pulling like uh, updates and stuff like that, it actually does come down at a reasonable speed. Um, and at night, I quite often get three megs or four megs on it. 
So I'm very happy with that. My main thing is with our cost is still the ADSL cost. Yes. It's still, I think, excessively high. And it's just gone up. Telcom's just pushed up the pr- – well, just – I think two weeks ago, pushed up the prices, except for the one meg a second yeah. option, obviously. Bastards. We've covered that already. Yes, yeah. So it looks to be the, the same story as multi choice, where all the tech is going down, they make inflationary adjustments up. Yeah. Um, Ooh, <laughs> don't go yeah. to multi choice. Let's <laughs> steer clear. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll stay out of there. Um, one of the topical things overseas at the moment now is obviously with Rupert Murdoch and all this hacking of the phones. Um, that people are wondering, are our phones safe, safe in yeah. this country? And hopefully, yes. I don't know what... The, the, the truth of the matter is, look, I don't know if the specs have been updated since then, but back when I was in varsity, mm. um, yo, I'm actually oh. quite old. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> back when I was in varsity, in my we, day. <laughs> we dealt with this, and the encryption they use on cell phones is actually incredibly incredibly cracked on what on the yeah, GSM side oh look I know it's been cracked I know but I mean we've, been, we've mentioned this so the guys that using the soft air software defined radios and open a uh, GUNU radio uh, you can basically buy a piece of hardware it'll be a bit expensive it's about a thousand dollars you need that you need, a, you need Linux you download the stuff and you've got yourself your own base station nice your own GSM wow. base station. N- okay. Now, now in, in, in terms of, of mm. cracking people's stuff, now listening in on their conversations, oh, yeah. um, I mean, y- there, there are two ways to do this. If you've got their SIM card... You then can clone it. Y- yeah, yeah. You, you can clone it, and, uh, and that's a, the easiest way, but you can even crack... Um, you can even crack the, the person's no. key, yes, yeah. his, his private key, if you need to. One of the cool hacks with the, with the GSM base station is, is the way it does um, escalation of privileges. So you can... You can initiate a call with zero encryption. You can then escalate the privileges to whatever the network uses. And as you escalate the privileges, those keys get sent in plain text, and you can just sniff the keys and oh, then nice. replay. Nice. So then you can get you can then having, you can having then said that, though, all these things are very targeted attacks, and you're gonna have to have somebody who's targeting you specifically. Oh, and relatively, yeah. relatively high level technology. But and that's things exactly like that. no, what this, these news of the world guys did. They no, found out they, they actually f- hacked. They basically there was a weakness. If I understood correctly, in retrieving it, so you could, with a normal landline, retrieve the things, and and there was a weak passwords and stuff like that. Is this on the uh, is this on the voicemail system? Voicemail, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's how yeah. they did it. It wasn't actually, they didn't go this high tech yeah, yeah, in doing go. it. Yeah. Um, but having said that, look, if, if somebody is really out of track, just you specifically, but as a general person in in, a, in amongst the, the masses, government already does. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the government wants to listen to anybody. Uh, America can, does. <laughs> uh, they, they can do it very easily. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't do anything on your phones that you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, now with Rico, that's the whole point, isn't it? It's supposed to, you know, discourage you from using your phone for criminal activity. But if you really want one, uh, you can they, find a pre sim yeah, for, for ten bucks. bucks. Well, <laughs> my thing with that though is you must also just make sure that you use a phone that's never been. Why are we giving criminals hints? <laughs> just, just stopping it there. If we go, well, then, if we go, let's go full on. But yeah, I'm just asking. <laughs> um, because, oh, I was yes, just yeah, going to no. say, just remember, as soon as you plug, uh, your phone also has an ID that gets sent yeah. through to the carrier. As soon as you plug a SIM in, so even if you put a clean SIM in, they still got your ID. And if you've previously put a recut phone that really is linked to you, they can still track you. Yeah, by the IS. What's it? IMSI number or yeah. something? Yeah. Um, speaking of, t- uh, yeah, sorry, the IMEI yeah. number. Speaking of tinfoil hats. Uh, some people in this country were a little bit behind the co- curve because mm-hmm. uh, Google Street View expanded their um, their mapping. To, 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 yeah, to, to the areas. That oh, all sorts of areas. It's quite interesting. I mean, down in the Cape, and you mm-hmm. can go look at go to Cape of Gullis and all the rest. But anyway, and all the tinfoil foil nuts came out of the woodwork screaming, it's privacy invasion. So, um, guys. Well, where were you last this year is, when they sniffed our Wi-Fi traffic? Yeah, this was, this, this, hap- this was started a year ago, and it's been available for over a year now. So... Well, that's the thing is they've now gone to the far to reach one. So all the people are actually complaining. Have already the, been 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 yeah, but I mean, come ages. on. I had a look at some of the comments and the guy's like, this is the first time I've seen it. I never even knew Street View existed. How? Just want to know. living in a cage apparently. Cage oh. somewhere. Which probably wasn't photoed. Ah. So that might well, have been the problem. What probably happened is. Is, is these communities, you know, got themselves on Google Street Views. The one guy in the town that, that was about them all to all up. Um, mentioned it, they had a little town hall meeting, and now all, all of a sudden everybody knows how to work Google, uh, yes. which is actually a great service to them. I mean, come on, and, and really, the Street View would be great for, for that type of thing because what it, you know, it's tourism. It's nice to go check the place where you're going to go visit. 
it's fun to you know uh, just you know click on a weird place in South Africa and have yeah, yeah. Street View right there. Nice. Check it out. Well, hey, yeah, I've also used it quite often it. when you need to find your way to your place. Oh yeah, no, I use that every time, um, and it's great because you just quickly pop in there and you go, okay, this will look right. And when you're driving, you go, oh, oh. Wait, I recognize it. Okay, yes, yeah, there yeah. we are. No, um, I use it all the time. I mean, it's so great. Someone sends you, oh, meet us at this restaurant or something in this mall. Nine times out of ten, you can just by looking on Street View, you can look into, you can look at the mall and you'll see exactly where the restaurant is, and it's not a hassle to. Well, that's very handy. And, so. and if Google genuinely caught you in a compromising position, then you can have your stuff removed. That that I can concede. Yes. But uh, seriously, if the street is empty. Well, wasn't it in Germany where they, they're all paranoid, so they, they blur the images of the houses that the guys request? Yes, they do. <coughs> yeah. So some artist went and made this fake uh, blurred, blurred house. Blurred house. <laughs> so basically, if you take, take a picture of it, it looks like it's been blocked, pixelated and blurred. <laughs> that's <Nice>. awesome. <laughs> Just to sort of go... Yeah, what are you yeah. worried, so worried about? It, it comes down to a point. Like everyone was saying, oh, the criminals are going to use it. Yes, they could use it. Of course they could use it. But they could also just walk around your neighborhood. True. With a camera. With a camera. Take photos. And then you're not aware of it. Yeah. So so what's the difference? Yeah, I don't think it adds any more risk or... Yeah. So anyway. I think the, the, it will add risk. It always will add risk. But the, probably the risk, the, risk uh, the, the benefits outweighs yes. the risk. Yeah. Uh, sorry, especially with you know South Africa. Um, I, I checked my house, and I think that's about two years old. So it's still when they were digging up our sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Those are the pictures they have on there. <laughs> I, wanna, I wish you could submit pictures to this. Yeah, it's updated. You could you run <laughs> your own your community live pro, uh, with Street View project, and you could submit. Mm. Well, maybe that's an idea. Wonder. Anyway, moving right Speaking along, of, that was <laughs> good foray into the tin hat. Now into an article that uh, was written by Jan Vermeulen. Dun, dun, dun. What did I do? Should your time? next computer monitor be a TV? Dude, did I get <laughs> nailed for that? Why? <laughs> Why on. did you do oh, that? My <laughs> word. You, you, missed, you missed the pre show comments. <laughs> uh-huh. um, well, you guys are, are, are more than welcome to, to rail at me. What I investigated there was quite simple. Yeah. Why are 27 inch TVs? the same price as 27-inch monitors when the TVs have far more features. So my question, to, I, and I contacted a bunch of manufacturers, was are, is there any difference between the panels? And the, the answer that came back was no, no, which we know is incorrect. Um, most um, standard PC panels are TN panels. Um, whereas yeah, what does that mean? Uh, I don't remember. It's the type of... Um, it's tra- it's transistor transistors. Or, it's or th- thin film transistors. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Well, TN isn't TFT. TN, I think, is the type what, of junction the sh- they use yeah. in the silicon dope. If you want to know what it is, there's a very cool video. Uh, it's by hey, the engineer guy. Oh, yes. I and know, very he cool. explains in very simple terms the differences between TN tr- panels and um, IPS and, and all. PDA and he goes that. into how they manufacture them and how the pol- polarization well, yeah. light so, works. Um, so go check the video. Yeah, check cool. that out. But I mean, going into that here. Yes, th- yeah. That's, by the way, why I didn't go into it in the article. Um, I have 400 words. Yeah. Right. Um, so otherwise, I mean, it's really funny because if I go into massive technical detail and it takes me 800 words, people are like, just summarize that in an article for me, please, rather than a thesis. If I do it in 400 words, they're like, oh, you missed this and this and this and this technical detail. The bottom line is, is that um, firstly, Samsung came back and said that there's a 25 percent tax on monitors, which they circumvent with TVs because they manufacture them locally. Right. Um, I'm Can't st- they do the same thing with monitors. Apparently, yes, but I think that the demand for monitors is so low compared to TVs that they, that they don't. That's uh, speculative. I'm following up on this. I'm also following up on the whole 25% taxation thing because the last I heard, there was a new ad valorem duty to be levied on yeah, for the PC TV monitors. Licenses. But that was, that w- was also easy to circumvent in the case of PC monitors. Mm. So that, that was the – because previously uh, PC monitors weren't taxed at all due to the fact that it's – all no computer true. equipment is, is uh, tax-free as yes, a yes. way to foster innovation and yeah. work in this country. And then they said that too many of them are being used as TVs, so they want to start taxing. Yes, um, exactly. But apparently getting around that ad valorem duty is still quite easy uh, if it's an uh, honest-to-goodness monitor. Um, anyway, and so that was the bottom line of the article. But what was interesting that came out of this, if you go and read in the comments of the people flipping 
<laughs> pulling into my my very character um, <laughs> is um, you know is the difference between there, there is a difference between the panels. Yes, I didn't mention in the article that you can get thirty inch displays such as Apple's own cinema displays mm -hmm. that are incredibly high resolution. But drive that with an average PC, you need a, you need a PC decent with a decent PC. graphics card in order to drive those two five six zero by sixteen hundred displays. A, uh, and B, the point was to try and at least compare like with like. So now um, what you see on the monitor side, uh, on the TV side, for instance, you can get a 1080p TV um, at 32 inches, right? Yeah. You can get them for, I think, about four grand or something is, yes, what, I, yeah. is what I find, right? Um, but if you go to the monitor space, you, you don't get that at all. You, you can get these, um, these wall monitors. Yeah. They yeah. start at seven grand and they're not 1080p. Um, so, uh, it, it all depends on the size that you want, but basically the, the, the bottom line of this is for the equivalent size, um, especially when it comes to 27 inches, you're going to get more value out of a TV than you will out of a monitor. And people will argue about refresh rate and that's a valid argument, um, you know, for gamers maybe. But the fact is, is there are people who are playing Halo and all kinds of shooters on IPS panels. Yes. I, I must say, I, how many people do you know that are looking at a 27 inch monitor for their next screen. 27 yes. is a little bit on the large side. Yeah. I'd Look, rather I, get, I'd I'd rather get two 24 inches or yes. something. Yeah, yeah. Which, which a lot of, I mean, I prefer, personally prefer 24 inch, but I mean, this is an argument um, I had with my editor and, uh, and so he's all for bigger is better. Yeah. So he's actually thinking of a 30 inch panel. Um, but that's only worth it if you have better resolution. You know, if it's the same yes. resolution. That's my argument with yeah. him as well. And I'm like, listen, when you get into pixels per inch, the large, the, that's why I go for a 24-inch monitor for, uh, and my personal preference is 1900, uh, 1920 by 1200, yeah. which they don't make anymore, um, or which they do make, but you'll have to get in like an HP, a special HP monitor, and they, they clock, I, what did I look at? Five grand for a 24-inch monitor. Yeah. And you can pick them up for two grand, 24-inch, if you just go yeah, H, yeah. It just 1080p. Instead yeah. Of, you can actually, yeah, like, but cheaper than that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, instead of adding 120 extra pixels, mm. you know, uh, on the bottom. So, um, or not 120, 120 by 1920. Um, so, I mean, there are arguments here and there. The bottom line is, is that the TVs get here cheaper. If, the, if you want one's the size of a TV, buy the TV. The only reason why I would say I'd rather have two monitors than one giant monitor is it's easier to tile things, tile applications if you've got them in separate monitors. Mm -hmm. um, also, having to swing your head around look, like this while you're looking for something. I mean, if you've got a, a monitor that's that size in front of you, I mean, really, you're going to code a little bit here, and then you're going to. It's rather have a couple of panels around no, you. I wouldn't mind having one big monitor if it was the resolution of a couple of monitors. Yes, yeah. which is um, exactly what no, the no, high end yes. thirty inches give you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they're still they're, freaking huge. Have you ever used? Have you ever sat in front of one and tried to work in front of one? Tim? I'd love to. It's monstrous. It would be cool. Yeah, it's uh, uh, just not within my price. Yeah, range. no, exactly. I mean, twelve thousand and more yeah. for monitors like that. But if anybody would like us to review one, we would very happily do it. Absolutely. Um, you can actually see uh, how our review videos look. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a review. No, you can't. No, you can't. We've got a, we've got a review up on my broadband of the Asus Transformer. Yeah. And we've we recorded a video review here in the studio with Kharat, the reviewer of no, the Asus didn't. Transformer. And that's yeah, that up on my true. broadband now. <laughs> yeah, I done last week Thursday. Yeah. And it's oh, cool. That's a first try. And so be kinder than you were to or, me in my monitor article. Or, or please. Give us feedback. We want to know mm, what you absolutely. think, what more, what, what other information you want. Did we talk too much, too little? P please let us know. Yep. Flame him. Uh, the next thing I want to talk what, is... What, sorry, coming back to the video, what were the comments like? Was there a lot of flames? Was there um, oh, um, on, the, on the video on so the, far? Um, on well, the, yeah, it went up at four or so. Um, yeah, there weren't a lot of comments when I checked. Oh, yeah. okay. So right. we'll, we'll see tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning will be a better But time now the ZTE article has bumped it. Silly ZTE getting raided. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Why Do you want to talk about that quickly? Sure, sure, if, uh, if uh, we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or if you want to. Um, really scant details at the moment, but we, we heard a rumor of this this afternoon, and obviously the, it's been verified. ZTE got nailed by Home Affairs and the Saps and the Hawks today um, on the suspicion of having illegal workers in South oh, Africa. okay. So we'll see how far that goes. Mm. ZTE did not take too kindly to it. They say the way they were unfairly imagine, targeted, yeah. and um, and will be um, somebody is doing saying something in IRC, um, and uh, yeah, and anyway, and so they say that they're going to sue Home Affairs. So that'll be 
Interesting. Interesting. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, but go check on more about my broadband. I'm sure you guys are going to keep on covering it. And yeah, give yeah, the guys sure. If they, as soon as there's details, we'll definitely cover the it. The next thing I want to talk about with this Afri host one Rand ADSL promotion, <laughs> which, which I must say, very cool promotion for, for what it actually is, but it's slightly misleading. I got was a bit disappointed because they say one Rand for <coughs> for up to you know for most of the the packages, uh, also for the uncapped one. You don't pay one Rand for the uncapped one. Really? I didn't try. I only went for the 100 gig. Well, I saw it. I thought, well, over here, we, 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 got, we actually use every host for our bandwidth for the show. Um, our, what, what, what can I lose? I, you know, I'll shove it in here, uncap one for two months and give it a spin. Um, I think you get a discount. It's, and it's a f- fairly good discount. So don't get me. If you want to try, go try them out. The best price, very, very good prices for what you're getting. Or the rest of it, just, I felt a bit cheated. I would feel cheated too if they said one rand and it ended up not being um, one rand. I think it was like 200 and something rand for the 4 meg, but you basically had a lot more months. than one rand. Yes. Okay. So I thought you were going to bitch about it being like a one rand 20. No, no, no. no <laughs> nothing like that. So I think you got like a 160 rand discount for the 4 meg. For one, yeah. one month or two months? I think it was per month. I, I could be wrong. I, don't, I didn't look beyond that. Yeah, because the one rand deal, obviously that covers your bandwidth for two months. So I get 200 gigs for two months for a buck. No, you don't. You get the most you can get for one rand is five gigs. Now, yes. I got the 100 gig package before they sold out. They, they, oh, okay. they limited the high because they said that they only have a limited amount of bandwidth mm-hmm. um, and so, or data. Well, bandwidth. And so um, to, to meter it off, there were guys picking up the 100 gig packages. And so they'd only be able to send around you know, a handful. And so they curbed it down. Um, and when I checked back, minutes, I, I'm not even, like 20 minutes after the promotion went live, I checked back, and they were down to only 20 gig package, up to 20 gig packages, and then today, they were down to only 5 gig packages. <gasps> maybe that's, that's the thing, is maybe I checked in too late, and they, they were still being kind to them, us guys that yeah. were checking it late. But competition's king, eh? No, it's cool. Look, I, I must say, very carefully, yeah. great that they're giving these discounts. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a problem, it's just, I got there all excited, and it's like, eh, this is not a rand. <laughs> but then may, maybe, but then they should have just, yeah. Give it a bit more information. The, the, about their promotions do tend to be quite malleable. Like they announce one thing and then they realize, oh, crud. Um, you know, like the last time, their server fell over uh, when they were doing the promotions. This time around, at least their server stayed up, but they had to dramatically adjust the promotion in order to. Because their point is exposure. So yes. they want to no, get the accounts to as many people as possible. So if 50 Oaks all grab a 100 gig package, <laughs> that's not maximum exposure, is no, it? No, true, but I mean. They should yeah, have thought of that. Yeah, true, but I, I, you know. You, you always got to look at it. Hey? Yes, so guys will grab it. But hey, how much does it really cost you? Oh, yeah. it, I mean, how much really for that guy to stay? How long? You know, how long will he have to stay a client before you make your money back? Which is probably not not that long. So no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what banners do you use at home, Quinton? I am on IS. Clean. Shame. Ooh. Sorry. Through Afreos or through OpenWeb or <laughs> no, directly to IS. Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe they're different. Sorry, uh, we've tried. IS here, uh, at home I've got MWeb, which is mm. quite nice. Uh, we're using AfriHost for the show because it's their per gig is, is the mm. cheapest and it gives a bit of streaming. Um, I, I, yeah, we're not going to go The reason we're on IS is because the employer resells it. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. Well, you have to eat your own dog food, so it's all fair. Yeah. And I'm on a 384 line. Anyone want to sponsor me a line? <laughs> so I don't know if it's crap because it's crap in any case. Well, well last time I look, you can get five gigs from, from AfriHost for one rand. On it's a 384 the line. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take me a whole month to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so five gigs. I think on the, on the 384, four. you maybe don't feel the, the problem with IS, but I know on the 4 meg, uh, I had pain with them. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually considering if I'm going to stay with MWeb uncapped, I might downgrade myself to 1 meg. Um, because when I go full tilt on something, like every, every now and again on Steam, um, my download speeds just get like throttled. But that might be a Steam mm. issue. I know Steam was really busy this weekend. You, what I find on IS is that if you, if on the slower lines especially, if you want to use it, have full functionality, you need to have a caching proxy in front of your router. Because I- even on Google image search, load images, second page results, you only get the gray blocks. It doesn't load the rest. Uh, and interesting. I- as soon as you run a torrent, even if it's something legitimate, there was a free TV series, open source TV series that you could torrent. Mm-hmm. As soon as you hit the torrent download, everything gets throttled to... 78 or something kilobits per second. Yeah, but that's true on almost any uncapped package. As soon yeah. as you hit those torrents. Like when I, when I start my torrents on my MWeb connection, I, I can't log into Steam. Yeah. Uh, can't you? In fact, Steam, I sometimes even get disconnected from but Steam. I, yeah, I've I got I the same thing. I can still browse and stuff. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. I could, that's the thing. I mean, it's, they've got really, really good shaping mm. because your torrents are running obviously on one you know, on one segment, and then your normal HTTP traffic is going fine. Like I can do an I, HTTP I download at 400 kbps. Uh, yeah, so it's all the the, the uncommon ports second. that they basically get shaped with yeah. the thing. Yeah, well, yeah. On, and, on and but Steam should really be flagged. Uh, so just well, my, my main problem with IS on on a four meg uncapped is during the day I would not get above 512, and that's even pulling off the local Ubuntu servers. I could not get. Yeah, and that was on the business. Oh, we had the same problem on the four meg business ca uh, uncapped accounts, and it. It's got a bit anyway, yeah. we, but we, we have to we, move we, along yes. because we always bashing, get stuck on talking yes. about how crappy how bandwidth things is. So Stu, you want to talk right. about CERN and launching open source hardware? If it's yeah, no. I'm a big fan of open source hardware, as some people may have noticed. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there was quite a cool thing. Uh, CERN is now launching a community centric effort called the Open Hardware Repository, and it's at uh, the ohwr.org. And they are going to feature some of their open source hardware projects oh, in there. Cool. So they've got some. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty geeky stuff here. I mean, they've got there's one project called White Rabbit. It's a fully <laughs> deterministic Ethernet-based network for general purpose data transfer and synchronization. The aim is to be able to synchronize a thousand nodes with some sub nanosecond accuracy sure. uh, over fiber and copper lengths of up to ten kilometers. So it's geeky stuff. But the designs are there. The HDL spec is there. The, the, you know, the VHDL is there. The schematics are there. Um, as far as I know, it even goes like the case design is there. <laughs> the whole thing is open. And if you ever needed a synchronization node for something, well, hey. So op open source hardware is actually yeah. finally really starting to get a bit it's of It's interesting. It's, this is now, I mean, CERN uses a lot of open source software. In there. I don't know if you've had a look at, you know, when they first fired up the LHC and they've done other things. They, were, they run a lot of, a lot of um, scientific Linux, yeah. what they call it. It's, it's basically their own distro that they've mm, built specifically yeah. for, the, for the center. And, dude, I mean, they've got video walls that are showing KDE on them and stuff like that. So they're a very, very heavy user of it. But this is interesting that they've got <coughs> um, some interesting projects that they, they're using. I've seen... They've got some high-speed ADCs, uh, you know, PCI, exp uh, PCI Express FMC carriers, whatever the hell those are, and some other goodies. So, hey, hey it might be rate, interesting. Check it, out. it might be interesting, and it might be a, a cool place for a bit of reference designs and, you know, if you're ever into that sort of stuff, mm. go check it out. Um, talking about uh, the, the open source hardware, I, I know that there was a, like a gaming console a handheld yes. gaming console, the Open Pandora. Yeah, yeah. Um, now there's today I saw I'm totally plugging the My Star uh, Publishing <laughs> house today, but my gaming ran an article about a, a, a gaming console called the ND. Okay. Um, and uh, that's going to be a handheld gaming console yep. for ten dollars, ten US dollars. That's um, very that's cool. crazy. Uh. I don't know. We'll see if when it, you know if it comes to light and, and at what price point it comes to light. No. Um, but they promise that this is aimed at indies. Yeah, and the, problem and the specs are not too bad on it. A eh? lot of these down. things, until they yeah. not vaporware anymore. I yeah, know. Oh, yeah. Dude, because we've heard so many of these things. Yeah, yeah. At but least the one, open Pandora wasn't vaporware. You could actually buy them. Yeah. You can still buy them, actually. I've, I've ordered one and I still haven't got it. Yeah, but they are, I mean, they are as relative. Uh, as far as I know, they, their new production run is starting up now or something. Oh, uh, like is it already know, now? But yes, but so. It was supposed to be last. I was supposed to have it for Christmas. Um, <laughs> but <Shame>. yeah. <laughs> anyway, this ND, 400 megahertz CPU, 320 by 240 resolution. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it looks low spec enough to yeah. be real. Yeah, and so it, it'll we'll be see. like a well, it'll be like a um, after like Nintendo, the old Nintendo sixteen bit system emulator, emulator look alike and things like that. So okay. hey, but dude, four hundred megahertz, you can have crap loading. You can do quite a bit megahertz. with that. Yeah. That was my first Pentium, four hundred megahertz. Is it Celeron? I had a I had a one thirty three. I played Counter Strike. I, in that I thing. had a had a three fifty. I think. And that, that took me through one. my whole vast. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> as someone was saying, as so, as uh, Fried Roadkill was saying on the, IRC, it's almost the same specs as like the first PS One. Uh, sorry, the first yeah first gen PSP. Sorry, no, first yeah. gen well, PSP. Yeah, talking about that, I think it's just more scary that the next generation of phones are going to have more power than the current PS Three. Three. Yeah. Nice. Really? Yeah, with yeah. that new Kalel. Tegra Kalel. Quad core system. Yeah, if you oh. haven't seen the demo, uh, go find the demo. Yeah, oh. Nvidia's uh, humbly named Carlel. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
i.e. battery drainer. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, coming back to the open, have a look. There is quite a few projects. I've just mentioned a couple. So there's a whole list of projects that might be something interesting. Uh, you know, if you guys are engineering students, you should probably have a look at that for maybe you could get some ideas for your final year projects. Mm -hmm. There could be some designs there. Hey, why not? Or expand it, extend it. Yeah. Just think how cool it would be. Maybe get a hold of some of these guys and say, listen, I'm, in it. I'm going to be doing a project. I've, you know, can I expand your product? Who knows? They might actually implement it in, uh, actual, um, in an actual industry use. It Very might be cool. quite fun. So. All right. Anyway, the next thing, which uh, Stu wants to get next, <laughs> all the rest is uh, Minecraft. Yeah, it's just mine. Okay, so. I know Gerrit was quite we excited were, about this. Oh, we were really all pretty, pretty, pretty excited about Minecraft. No, this I isn't the kicker. Never yet. played it. Oh. You never played it. Never played it. It's like it's time. I I've looked. I've looked at Minecraft. It's a time waster. A huge time waster. But if you have to choose an MMO, we had our own. We had our own server running at at my at office. Unfortunately, the PC got dismantled and taken away. So, because the boss said no more Minecraft for you. But anyway, so it was a couple. It was a couple of us that used to play on that Minecraft server. We had a castle. It was quite cool. But anyway, um, if you guys don't know what Minecraft is, it's does basically it, does like... Does it run a, on Ubuntu? Yes, it does. Yes, it we does. Have a server. It's, it's Flash, isn't do it? That. No, cool. it's Java. Oh, Java. Sorry, it's yeah. Java. So the, it, yeah, it's a bit, bit resource intensive. Yes, um, this, even the server is a bit okay, heavyweight. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, basically... Dude, it's what running it is, a whole world. Yeah, no, it's pretty impressive. So basically what it is, is this procedurally generated world on like one meter by one meter cubes. And then you can manipulate the world. So okay. you can mine things, chop down trees, build stuff, go nuts. Plant and trees, combine things. Yeah, it's just, it's really open, hey. And then, I mean, get anyway, and then up by the green, yeah, monsters. Let's the, not the, say the, what they really are. Anyway, called. You, you anyway. Can, so now someone has gone along and he could say he wanted to take his Minecraft things that he built and turn them into real objects. So he has started Minecraft dot print. And you can take a Minecraft object and you can print it. S seriously. Print Effectively it. a 3D printer? Using a 3D printer, yes. So it plugs into, it generates the, it generates the SDL file that mm -hmm. the 3D printers can read and then you can print it. So they've got some things like, he's got a giant companion cube. So if you ever got, guys have ever played Halo, uh, not Halo, uh, Portal. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, 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 sorry. Walk the Portal. Um, no, no cake for you. <laughs> no cake for me. It's a lie. <laughs> the cake's a lie. <laughs> Uh, they've got like a, one example is a giant companion cube and they've got the, the USS Enterprise, a couple of models for that. But there we go. So if you guys have got a, a, a 3D printer and you enjoy uh, Minecraft, there go we go. It. What does a 3D printer go for nowadays? The cheapest one you can get is a RepRap and it's about $1,000. There was a new That's one that they've bad. got though that they say is quite a bit, though it was still not, it wasn't. It's a bit vaporware. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not out yet. The cheapest one at the moment. Well, okay. Right. The cheapest one that you can buy is the RepRap. You still have to do self. You still have to mm. assemble it yourself. And there might be a bit of soldering involved, but it's doable. The cheapest one you can get is probably a. Um, sorry, the MakerBot is the cheapest one. The the uh, you can buy. The RepRap is assemble it yourself. So you'd have to go and source the belts, the motors, build the, your own print head. Also open yourself. source hardware. It's all open source hardware, and it's it's. I mean, it'll take you a couple. It'll probably take you a couple, uh, maybe a month or two to to assemble and get working. Where it's a three D printer that prints itself. It's a three D printer that prints itself. Very um, cool. So you can that you could probably get for like you know maybe a th maybe a couple of thousand rand, but you then have to find a lot of the parts yourself, and it's the oh, barrier. It might be entry. fun to do that. But if you're interested, uh, the it's the cupcake printer from MakerBot Industries. That's probably the cheapest one in the market at the moment. Just over $1,000. All right. Okay. I, I've re unfortunately pasted the link. It's, it's our final <laughs> link today. <laughs> <coughs> Slave Leah. Yes. Yeah. You, you found this. I so. found Well, actually, someone posted it to me on Google+. Plus. Uh, well, yeah, what is it? Not posted it to me. Circled it to me or whatever the hell you want to <laughs> call it. Yeah. Inboxed you. They shared it with they you. They shared it with me. <laughs> what okay. What is Slave Leah? It's a, it's a, it's a, a public service announcement. <laughs> Watch it. It's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's, it's, it's a public service announcement. And, 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 if it'll, and if it'll make you click 
um, the, the link, uh, you know, a little more. It's a public service announcement from the, the woman who plays Penny from Big Bang Theory. Kaylee Kuko. For those who don't know her a- name. And there's lots of girls dressed up as Slave Leah. Leah. I think that's more likely. That's to probably guess. a better sell than, <laughs> yeah. than Kaylee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I haven't watched it to the end, so I can't tell you if she's actually in a Leah costume. But that's we digress. Right, Right. don't digress. (laughs) Don't Don't want to ruin. I don't want to ruin it for people. So I say Kuko. I can't pronounce her surname. It's got lots of U's in it. C U O C O. Yeah, Kuko. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you know, so right. I believe it's Kuko. Kuko. Yeah. Okay. And I right. can't remember how I pronounced it the first time. I probably was wrong. So, yeah. All right. She's the blonde girl in Big Bang Theory. The ditzy one. <laughs> and with, with that, we're going to uh, end the show. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, first of all, tomorrow night is Alter Frequence. Yep. Tune in and watch. Uh, and from next week, uh, actually, not next week, the following week, we're going to be next week sh- show starts on Tuesday with. RT Sports. And that's going to be a weekly show now. Yeah, it's going weekly. weekly. And then from the following week, we're going to be Monday to Thursday. Yes, because Let's Talk Possibility be on Monday. Sports on Tuesday. Yeah. Us on Wednesday. LT Afri- Afrikaans on, on Thursday, Thursday. Alternating with? Or Nothing. every week? Uh, sports, Geek, and Afrikaans are going to be every week. Yes. Um, possibility will be alternating weeks. Okay. Um, but we, we're getting there, bit by bit. Yeah. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that joins the show. Uh, Stuart Allen. Uh, cool, cool. If you can find him at uh, Stu underscore ZA. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jan Vermeulen. I almost called you your brother's name there quickly. Uh, it's Jan Z- V ZA. Uh, Quentin, Quentin ZA. Cool. Gerrit Vermeulen for mixing. Thanks, uh, man. Only a pleasure. And Tim no. for talking. We'll have to see how well you did. <laughs> yeah. Because there was well. lots of clicking over there, so that's only good. <laughs> Oh, no, the next <laughs> one is, is t- tonight he's going to be editing for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, uh, whatever mistakes you make, you can hide them. <laughs> or whatever mistakes we made, you can hide. Hide, yeah. Um, anyway, also thanks for myself, Tim Hawk. Uh, thank you for joining us. Chat to you guys next week. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Cheers, Cheers man. Man.